Welcome back to the Twin Spires Racing Roundtable. I'm Ashley Anderson here with James Scully and Vance Hansen. I'm back from New Orleans where I was covering the Louisiana Derby and the Fairgrounds Oaks. We're going to talk that today, plus the Jeff Ruby Stakes. And Vance, I got to give it to you like I did last time. You gave me a great food recommendation. This time it was Dickie Brennan's a Steakhouse down in the French Quarter. If you ever down in the French Quarter, definitely check it out because everything I ate was absolutely delicious. So thank you once again, Vance. You you are absolutely welcome. That was that's a great steak place, as you mentioned. And uh, I need to get back down to New Orleans again myself because I've run out of rec restaurant recommendations for you. So I got to find some new places for you. <laughs> Well, I'll let you start things off today. Let's talk about catching freedom going from last to first to win the Louisiana Derby. What were your takeaways from that race? Uh, I thought the top three ran very well, catching freedom, Honor Marie and Tuscan Gold. They all look like legitimate Derby, Kentucky Derby prospects now. They, uh, Tuscan Gold slightly less so given his relative inexperience and his position behind uh, Sierra Leone and Chad Brown's pecking order. But, uh, you know, these are all solid efforts. The track was seemingly playing fair uh, to their running styles. They were, uh, the top two are deep closers in that race, and the pace wasn't all that hot either. So uh, catching freedom looked really good. Honor Marie, uh, he, he took a step forward after a somewhat moderate uh, performance in the Risen Star over and off track. So I would definitely be uh, taking a long look at both catching freedom and Honor Marie six weeks from now. Uh, the beaten favorite was Track Phantom, who set the pace. Uh, he's pushing onwards towards the Derby despite his fourth place finish, but he simply doesn't look like he's going to stay a mile and a quarter uh, in my eyes. And, uh, and that's uh, obviously based off his effort in this past weekend, going a mile and three sixteenths, and his effort going a mile and an eighth in the Risen Star, James. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I'll start just with catching freedom. I, I thought that he stepped up with a big performance. Um, you know, he got a little bit shut off at right at the break and dropped back to last. And that was just a massive late run he offered. And, you know, I came away impressed not only with the performance, but he got a 100 Brisnet speed rating, which was a significant improvement from his previous efforts. And only Mystic Dan, who earned a 101 speed rating, has run faster in a Kentucky Derby qualifier this year. So that's a fast effort. Uh, he's he, he He's just progressed significantly since I think that Smarty Jones win on January 1st. So I just like his progress in his three starts leading into the Derby. I also like the way Honor M M Marie improved upon his fifth, his belated fifth in the Risen Star. He took a step forward. He's shown an affinity for Churchill winning the Kentucky Jockey Club last fall. Now, one thing about them is uh, they're both going to bring a strong late kick to the Derby, but they're they're closers. Uh, you know, when I think the landscape right now is a little bit dominated by stalkers and confirmed closers. Uh, that's why a horse like Track Phantom, you might not have much confidence in his chances at 10 furlongs, but you definitely want to see him in the Derby, in my opinion, because he will add speed to the race, Ashley. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm wondering who's going to get that hot pace for the closers. We have so many good late runners here. And Honor Marie also has two wins at Churchill. So definitely like seeing him bounce back and get that second here in the Louisiana Derby. And so going back to Churchill, maybe it'll be the right formula for Whit Beckman to get his first Derby win. He's a Louisville native as well. So that's a cool connection there. With Catching Freedom, I was starting to get more and more excited about this horse as the week went on. Had that third place finish in the Risen Star. So I thought added distance, of course, could handle it here. But beginning of the race, I was like, what am I thinking? This looks like for sure a dud right now, looking at the way he started that race. But then going eight wide to rally and finish, finish first by a length. Now I feel pretty confident with a mile and a quarter. I think he can certainly handle it. Tuscan Gold was another horse I was interested in, of course, because Chad Brown picking the spot off a of maiden when it seemed like he must know something, something about this horse. And I thought he'd show up pretty big here, jumping to stakes company. I don't know, though, if he's going to make enough points to make the field. I don't know if he'll show up in the Lexington to guarantee a spot if he wins, but he might be pointed toward the Preakness. Do you all have any insight or what do you think? James. I think you would need to. I do think you need to run in Lexington to get the necessary points, but I also think Chad uh, Chad Brown probably wants to do that. Uh, he had just broken his maiden, so that'd be a quick turnaround and a quick turnaround in the Derby. And and Vance referenced, uh, you know, Brown already has Sierra Leone. He also has domestic product that's going to be in the field too. So 
Um, I think the Preakness might be what winds up happening if he doesn't have the points. Well, James, let's talk the Fairgrounds Oaks where Tarifa got her third straight win. How impressed were you by her win? I was impressed. Uh, I think she confirmed herself. Tarifa confirmed herself as a leading contender for the Kentucky Oaks. And one thing I'll just say about her is I like her versatility. She's the Rachel Alexandra was her first stakes appearance and she's, she read it off the pace. I mean, she stalked the action that day, showed a good turn of foot in the stretch to prove best in the uh, fairgrounds Oaks on Saturday. Um, our pretty woman was out there loose on the lead and Flavian Pratt and Trifa did the dirty work. I mean, they were basically chasing her from the start, uh, keeping her, uh, you know, within their range and having the track to speed. And then, you know, it, it, I thought the runner up ran a really big race too, but uh, Trifa proved best in deep stretch to win go anyway by about a length, um, you know, similar to catching freedom. I, I, I think that uh, Tarif is a Philly for Brad Cox that is just moving forward at the right time of year, and she's eligible to keep progressing in the Kentucky Oaks, Vance. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Tarifa wound up a mild Kentucky Oaks favorite after sweeping her races in New Orleans this winter. Uh, she had to overcome a bit more adversity this in the Oaks than she had in the Rachel Alexandra, but it was mostly caused by her relux, reluctance to settle early on. Uh, it shows kind of what a potentially good horse she is that it didn't face her enough to uh, get the win over a very stubborn foe and our pretty woman. Uh, her, her rankness and her inability to settle might prove a problem against a larger field in the Kentucky Oaks, but we'll just have to find out about that. Uh, the disappointment in the race obviously was intricate. I don't know whether she has the quality to contend the Kentucky Oaks now, uh, but if she does end up going anyway, uh, her faithful backers will have a much better price on offer than what they were kind of expecting after this weekend, Ashley. Well, I will say Tarifa got an 89 brisk nut speed figure here, and she's kind of staying around that 89, 90 speed figure. I feel like she needs a little bit higher of a speed figure to win the Kentucky Oaks. And the fact that her three win streak has come at fairgrounds, but her lone loss is at Churchill. It's a little bit just to make the picture a little dicey here. <laughs> Yeah, it's but, something you, you've got to take into account. I mean, it's it's it could be a problem, but uh, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt. She, you. Go she ahead. did she did have some uh, traffic trouble in the stretch of that one race at Churchill that she lost. So, got to get cut her a little bit of slack there. But yeah, you, you know, when when you don't win at Churchill, it, it, it kind of sticks out in your record. Right. I certainly was impressed by her win, but just not gonna totally lock in on Tarifa yet for the Kentucky Oaks. I thought our pretty woman looked very good in her stakes debut as well. So interested to see in her fourth career start, that will be the Kentucky Oaks, what she can do for Steve Asmussen as well. And wanted to mention Vivi's dream. Wasn't sure if we were finally going to see her show up at a mile and a 16th. She had won at a mile, but after stretching out, just couldn't get that win. She did rebound to finish third here after finishing fifth in the Rachel Alexandra, but it looks like shorter distances are in her future, potentially the eight bells on the Kentucky Oaks undercard. Well, let's talk the other 100 point Kentucky Derby prep, the Jeff Ruby stakes at Turfway this Saturday. We had endlessly win by four lengths, but he's not going to show up in the Kentucky Derby. So are there any other horses we should watch out for in the Kentucky Derby, Vance? Uh, this renewal is not on par with the one won by uh, two fills last year. Two fills earned a 107 Brisnet speed rating, and speed rating, and arguably ran the best race in the Derby last year when he uh, raced close to a crushing pace before uh, finishing second to Mage. Uh, Endlessly is a very nice horse, obviously, and his con connections are doing right by him to a, a point elsewhere, given his fondness for grass and synthetic tracks. Uh, the the Two horses that immediately finished behind him, West Saratoga and Seize the Gray, are kind of rather exposed types, and they'll be major long shots if they get into the Derby field. So uh, I, I'm not looking for, I'm not look, I don't see any major contenders coming out of the, the race this year, James. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, the Jeff Ruby Stakes produced Rich Strike two years ago that won the Derby and two fills last year. So it's produced a winner and a runner up the last two years have been a really, you know, one arguably one of the most important preps, but I I, it'll, I, I'm, I don't think that it will have a major impact. I will give West Saratoga a little consideration for like the lower rungs, rungs of the uh, vertical exotics, like trifectas or superfectas, because he's shown an affinity for Churchill Downs. 
winning the grade three Iroquois last fall. And he showed a lot of grit, I thought, West Saratoga, just getting up for a second by a head. He had to break from the far extreme outside post. He traveled wide on the first turn, and he hung in there pretty well. He's moving forward for Larry Demerit. But the issue with that that Colt, uh, Ashley and Vance, is that he, he still hasn't run back to that 89 Brisnet speed rating he, he earned for the Jericoy at a one-turn mile. He still hasn't won at two turns in his career. So it, it looks like he'll be up against it, uh, even though he does like the track, Ashley, West Saratoga. It's also his 10th career start here in the Jeff Ruby. So he'll be making his 11th career start in the Derby. And you have to go back to Charismatic in 1999 to find a horse that was making – anything higher than a 10 start in the Kentucky Derby and actually won it. You had actually California Chrome was making his 10th start in the Derby. So I don't think history's on the side of West Saratoga here. I also had Seize the Gray, Triple Espresso and Lucky Jeremy all finish up in a bunch for that second through fifth place in this race. And Triple Espresso kind of riding off here. That was his sixth start for Todd Pletcher. I've been racing on the turf and only has a win on the turf. Seize the Gray closed at 33 to one in the Kentucky Derby future wager last week. And not really sure what to make of this horse either. I had an allowance optional claimer win at Oaklawn two back, but against Stakes Company, I don't really feel like he's shown me anything to feel like he can win the Kentucky Derby. And then Lucky Jeremy, I was interested in for this race. He broke his maiden at Churchill, but again, if anybody is coming out of this race and going to show up in the Derby, I feel like it's going to be someone that can hit the board but not win this race. One thing, though, with Endlessly coming out of the Derby, I mean, that's like 100 points just off the table. It could uh, – horses like Seize the Gray, you know, he, he I could very easily see him on the Kentucky Derby bubble. And if you get enough defections, uh, Triple Espresso, who does look a little bit like a turf horse, but he ran a – he got a trouble trip finishing fourth, and I could see them moving on to the Derby as well. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be impossible for a horse to get in with only 10 points. Unlikely, but not it's happened before. Well, we have a whole lot of 100-point derby preps left, including a few this weekend. So we'll be back next Tuesday to recap those races as well and check out our Twin Spires jury on Thursday for our best bets and fades. <laughs>